This is just a quick overview to show you some of the tools we're using and the overall workflow for fire members. When uh, something matches a keyword or certain people were following tweet, it goes into a, uh, a live feed here on Slack. And so here we're talking about the hog fire. We get some basic information here. This particular fire scanner is really good about listing location, uh, East Trimmer Spring Roads near Edison Point. Uh, that'll show up in our Slack uh, feed here. I can usually tell if someone's working on it, there'll be a little uh, hourglass or flag. And when it's done, that means it's been posted. And I'll show you what posting looks like. So we have a little landing page here with all of our apps. It starts out with the initial attack survey. This is a survey one, two, three web form. You could also do this from your mobile device through the uh, mobile app. Someone had entered in, this is the hog fire. They'll list the status, initial description of location. They'll find out where that is on the map. In this case, they've probably used some uh, different sources of information to narrow it in. You can see here the location that they plotted. They would just click on the map here. They'll report their uncertainty. Um, you know, we try to say, don't plot it unless you can get it down to five miles or less. They'll say what their source is. In this case, the first source was social media. Uh, they might end up with an agency website but we can come back to that later. So far, I didn't see any agencies talking about this. And if we know the field type, we can put that in there or we can come back to that later, put in our name, any additional comments. Sometimes I like to copy this right out of here and then submit. Once it's submitted, uh, if it's a uh, very busy red flag conditions, there'll be uh, a lead admin for each region just waiting for this. This is where we do our vetting. So we, uh, we reserve this for trusted users. And so once you're logged in, there's some instructions here. But the primary tool that we're using is a smart editor widget. We've also got some filters in here just to uh, clean up the map. And any of that are purple, I know still need to be vetted. So this is the one I just entered in. There's already one in that spot, but I'll show you what the workflow would look like. We go ahead and use the smart editor. And this is where if we wanted to show up on the public map, we'd go ahead and click yes. Uh, in this case, I'm going to click test point just so I don't mess up the map. And this is where we'd enter in all the additional information, agency information, agency website, uh, we can embed uh, wildfire camera information, uh, radio, radio URL, and then as part of a project, uh, we are also tracking if it's part of the, uh, if it's also been mapped by the Irwin project. And you can see by doing that, it automatically says it's related to that Irwin point. So more on that later. You can go ahead and click save. This is a test point, but you can see uh, the public point should already be on the map here when we uh, refresh the map. We put a little refresh interval on the map so that uh, the map, when it goes viral, still performs. But uh, when new users go, all the data will be up to date. And you can see here, the hog fire has been mapped and we'll add an additional information as it, as it becomes available. And then you can click on this button to tweet this map. And that's really it. We don't uh, always tweet every single fire. We try to stick to the ones where there is more information to gather, uh, an agency that we can point to, and uh, try not to tweet out uh, fires that are likely not to affect anyone. We try to really focus on the, the high impact ones. So that's really it. That's the workflow. And uh, hope this gives you a better understanding of what the fire mappers are doing. Thanks.